Hi, I'm Tom and I'm starting a Petra Kutcher series about working full-time in innovation. That is a high-energy, visually-oriented series of presentations of exactly 6 minutes 40 seconds, made up of 20 slides, each of which is shown for exactly 20 seconds. No fluff, no filler, no backtracking or staying off topic, and above all, no bullet points. I guess your first question is, why should we be listening to you? Short answer, because I've been doing this for most of my working life. I've been at or near the forefront of changing how people work since the 80s. I have a master's degree in innovation and entrepreneurship from HEC Paris, as well as separate master's degrees in IT and an MBA. I'm actually an expert in this. The topic of today's talk is, do I need to burn the boats or not? It's a popular phrase and was used by self-help guru Tony Robbins, as well as my old history teacher. It refers to the story about a conqueror coming to a land and burning his boats to make his people feel committed. I've heard it told about Cortes, Julius Caesar, and William the Conqueror. But it's about commitment. So who remembers this meme? It was all over the place. And honestly, how pathetic. She turned out to be a serial liar, and is now in serious legal trouble. And really, you don't have to abandon sanity along with your backup plan by striking some hyper-macho pose about having no way out. I would very strongly advise you, have a backup plan. A good one. I think a lot depends on the type of innovation you do. There are two types. Radical innovation, big changes. Like going from lighter than air to heavier than air for air transport. Huge changes in how things are done. Massive evolutionary leaps. One thing does not grow from the other. There's a definite discontinuity between the two, as you see in the picture here. The second type of innovation is incremental. You go via small steps, each of which builds on the success of the last to take you forward. You can see from the pictures, there's a clear line of sight from the guy in the dugout canoe to the cruise liner. You add a sail, then you go big with lots of sails, or you add a small engine which turns into a big engine, and wham, pretty soon you're a giant cruise liner. Now, for the big changes, the really radical transformations, you do need to commit fully to the goal. That needs to be a smart objective, stressing, achievable, but still maybe on the edge of what's possible. And for this, you'll need to be utterly resilient in the face of setback. You need to behave as though you will get over them and simply refuse to accept defeat. I tend to use three tools to ensure commitment from the team. Time, set and keep short deadlines. Fight like mad for each one to be done on time. The second, which works the best, contracts, reputation, public promises. Get people to commit publicly, then hold them to it. Finally, you have money. Everybody likes money. Focus them through their pocketbooks. I'm lucky enough to have been part of a team which won the 2021 Risk Magazine Technology Award. This is big in my industry. I won't pretend it was mostly me, but I did do a lot of the design and management work. And what drove us there for sure was pride. We wanted to show people that we could achieve an exceedingly difficult stretch goal and do something industry changing. I mentioned management earlier. Have you ever watched kids play soccer? They all run for the ball in a discoordinated mess. Maybe they score a goal, but probably not. Radical innovation needs actual management. You need to have somebody making sure that everybody's playing their part in the team and that you're all headed in the same direction, all aiming for one common understood goal. Incremental innovation is quite different though, and this is the area I have most experience with. It's much more like going on a long journey. The steps are small. Each should recognisably take you closer to your eventual goal. The commitment for each step is less, and if you hit a roadblock, you can stop for a while, rest, still be better off. Each step depends on the progress made by the last. You don't even have to go in a straight line. We've all seen the TV show where hooting buffoons drive milk floats down roads like this as a challenge. I love it. But notice that the road may go due north or south for whole stretches. Doesn't matter, it's still going the right direction eventually. This is the key to incremental innovation. It's not a straight line, but you get there eventually. But changing directions implies you occasionally need to pivot. People use the word, but do they actually understand what it means? It's not throwing away what you've done so far and starting from scratch like so many seem to think. Instead, it's about harvesting the learning and the knowledge you've taken to date and then using that to achieve a similar but slightly different goal. Think recycling and salvage, not reboot. And this implies then that you have to learn to be not afraid of your MVP. It's a minimum viable product. It should be something you could ship if you had to. And learn to like shipping it. Do so with pride. It's still a product, you're still better off, and hopefully you're closer to the goal than when you started. Celebrate the small wins. The other huge difference between the two types of innovation is that with incremental innovation, you can still score a lot of goals as a single person operation, working on your own. The saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, go as a team. There's a lot of truth there. If you need to generate speedy, quick wins, keep the team small, maybe just you. 
but when you come to try and make your innovation stick, you probably are going to need the team behind you. At which point, we're back to the question of how to motivate them to overcome obstacles and be tenacious. I still like the pride trick, it works, but the real key is to get some decent team spirit, some esprit de corps happening, and focus on short-term, achievable MVPs that you publicise. I'm also a huge believer in moonshots. North Star projects. Set large-scale goals for incremental innovation projects, which you know are almost impossible, but which serve as a guide and a motivator. The real moonshot was a catalyst for so much of the technology we use today. You'll see similar beneficial fallout from internal stretch projects. Clearly, you won't score a hit with every initiative. You will very often have a partial success, then you must pivot. Sometimes, though, you will fail deeply, and there's no shame in this. If you're not failing occasionally, it shows you're not trying hard enough, never stretching yourself and your team. So long as, on balance, the successes are more frequent, or make more money than the failures, keep on going. So, finally, we answer, do you need to burn the boats or not? And the answer is, it depends. For large, radical innovation projects, then you do need to increase the sense of commitment and use something to motivate the team to bulldoze through. For incremental innovation, where failure may be the seed of a pivot and later success, burning the boats may actually be toxic. To wrap up, I love this picture. This parachutist was fully committed. You don't get more committed than jumping out of a plane. But he had a plan B. His shoot failed. He had to use his reserve. He survived the jump. And I would similarly counsel you, have a plan B. Have a reserve shoot. You don't want your commitment to become utter disaster.